Hi, everyone. Today is Thursday, September 28th of 2023. And we're just getting started, waiting for people to filter into the room. How is your day going, Muant? Uh, we, we had a question and answer live stream uh, last night uh, for the Psychic Nerds. That was fun for the $30 members. And then uh, several of us went over and played Last Expedition. It's a pretty resource intensive first person shooter, uh, but it's really super fun. You have four teams uh, with four people uh, running around on a planet trying to collect uh, resources and uh, rebuild basically your core uh, for the spaceship uh, to get off planet. And it's a, it's just a blast. It's very like high paced, um, really polished looking game from uh, Gala Games. And it's just awesome. So we played that a little late last night. So I'm a little sleepy. Um, I <clears> well, I'm pretty excited computer. with Ga Gala Games coming out with all of these new decentralized blockchain games that a lot of people I think who are playing it don't even realize that it's on the blockchain. Yeah, absolutely. I was, I was nice. I saw, you know, they got this guy over there, the, their head of their blockchain uh, gaming or whatever, and he travels around the world a lot. Uh, his name is Jason Bitbender Brink, I think. And uh, I saw a CNN. So CNN has different offices around the world. So I was watching, uh, I saw that he did an interview. He was in the Philippines or Singapore doing, uh, I think he was over there for blockchain week for, uh, in Singapore. But uh, he was interviewed by CNN um, in the Philippines, and it was pretty interesting uh, just, you know, seeing his face on there and uh, talking about, you know, what these NFT games, what Web3, this blending of Web2 and Web3 can bring, you know, people spending time playing a game, owning assets, uh, trading assets, gifting assets. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of neat. Um, there's a lot of developments. Uh, there's a I don't know if you know this this gamer guy. Uh, he's he's actually pretty hilarious. He's you know, he puts on this whole uh, show. He wears like a, he's got a mustache and uh, he's kind of funny. His name is Dr. Disrespect. No, ever no I haven't, but I should probably it. take a look. Yeah. It sounds like he's a funny guy. and <laughs> he, He's ridiculous. <laughs> but uh, um, anyway, he runs several gaming channels and he's been working. He's like a, he's like a top level uh, Twitch guy and uh, gaming streamer, but um, he's coming out. They got, he's been working on a game uh, with Avalanche and uh, that's pretty interesting. Uh, and working on some different things. Actually, I don't think he's doing the one with Avalanche. He's doing it with somebody else, but it, it just slipped my mind. But anyway, it's kind of it's kind of neat to see this kind of gaming community kind of warming up to the idea uh, around uh, Web3 gaming and owning NFT assets. There were some things leaked uh, by uh, the new version of the Xbox that will be coming out, and it looks like that's going to be kind of uh, crypto enabled. It looks like anyway. So that's kind of interesting. And then you're seeing all these cross platforms, like uh, all these games that are coming out on mobile and then they're available uh, on a mo like a mobile device like Android or iOS and then also like on Xbox or PS5 and then also on a computer. So it's really nice to see these games that are kind of NFT or Web3 enabled that are crossing all these platforms. So I think that's really going to be great for gamers. Yeah, and great okay. for people who got into Gala Games early on. I mean... I'd rather be early than late. I'll tell you that. I never mind waiting. It is. It's nice yeah. being early. It is. It's just you know. I I explain that to people when, when I talk about um, some of the things that you know we've done really well on, and I said, well, you know, it, what it didn't happen overnight, and and there were times when, you know, it went up really high and pulled back, and you always wonder, you know, when should you cash that in? But if you know for sure that something's being developed and worked upon, and um, you know, that there's good people involved with it, then there's no reason why you can't just, uh, you know, stick to your guns and hold on to it for a couple of years and um, watch it blossom. And with that, you know, sometimes things don't work out, but as long, as long as you stay on top of it, which, you know, I think is a lot of times the difficulty that people have when they get involved in cryptocurrencies is that they don't really know what's going on deep underneath on the inside and, uh, you know, it's a good opportunity to um, have you let us know what's what what the word is in in blockchain because you're getting some you're you're getting some information on these games and you're actually playing them and then seeing whether or not um, it would be something that other people in the general population who aren't even necessarily into cryptos or blockchain would be interested in doing and I think that's really the key is that once you've got into something like um, you know XRP for example being used by the banks, you know, and so you've been holding it for years and years and now it's being used and people who are using it never thought about it, didn't know how it was related to Bitcoin, nothing. They're just using it. And it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a moot 
issue now, but you know, 10 years ago, it was hard to imagine. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, it seemed like uh, fanciful craziness stuff. And now it's really it's, a lot of it's just coming to fruition. And a lot of us knew it would get here. And yes, it's got a long way to go. Um, and there will be battles along the way. But it's really it's kind of it's becoming ubiquitous now. You know, it's it's kind of people don't look at you crazy when you're talking about NFTs or Bitcoin or Ethereum or anything else. They understand these words, at least, or they've heard them before. Um, so that's kind of cool. I, you know, I, there was an interesting uh, house hearing uh, yesterday with Gensler and man, they really, um, I'd like to use some choice language, but I probably shouldn't. They grilled him. Let's just say uh, that they grilled him quite a bit. I said, yeah. I don't know if yes, he caught, did you catch it? I was yeah. like, Oh, Oh, interviewed for jail. Remember what I said that he <laughs> for jail. <laughs> Barbara. Barbara. Pretty great. We're gonna pull that out by my from months ago. Like last year, I was like, Barbara. <laughs> yeah. It's nice to see that some of the politicians are really, you know, seven months ago they asked for specific information about his dealings with FTX and you know, when did they meet, what did they talk about? He's produced nothing. The only information that's come out or they've given to Congress is basically uh, public documents. So, and public available information or information that was publicly obtained through the Freedom of Information Act. So, um, they really are still holding his feet to the fire and, and pretty upset. Um, so, it would be nice if he could just answer a question, yes or no. Um, but I think everybody sees his little game that's going on there. So, you know, he can obfuscate all he wants or skate around issues, but everybody knows what's going on there. So anyway, and then Steve mentions over here on the side, the Gala poker game is really fun. It's free to play. Yeah, it's 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 actually really fun. Uh, and it is free to play. So if anybody likes to play cards like that, um, go check it out. You can load it right up on your on your phone and and uh, have fun. It's kind of neat. It's kind of fun running into your, uh, your buddies uh, that maybe you've, you know, built a relationship with up on the discords. And then, you know, you run into them at a table where you set a time and go play poker with them or something. It's kind of fun. Um, we'll be doing more of those organized events over at uh, Psychic Nerds. You know, maybe we'll set up certain nights or whatever throughout the week uh, where we can get together and just play a specific game. But yeah, um, guys, if you have questions, go ahead and put them uh, all in caps or put a Q in front of them uh, in this chat section, please. And then Sam, you and I have quite a few questions that we didn't get to or I'm sorry, that are new for us uh, this week. So why don't I go ahead and pull those up? Anything else you want to talk about before we, uh, you want to pull up any charts or just anything? What's what's on your crypto? Well, I was hoping that you would bring up about Gary Gensler because it's interesting yeah. when you see that because I do think he's in really big trouble and I do think it's part of the everything all at once. And I was like, oh, I wonder if he is going to be forced to step down because it's still September. And I felt like he would be forced to step down. And it probably is because of FTX and his relationship with Barbara. <laughs> oh, man. Do you think Goldman Sachs turns people bad or are they just bad? When they go? <laughs> I think that everybody <laughs> has uh, good and bad in them for sure. And what happens is that you get yourself into an environment um, like in sales, like in financial sales where it sure. they make it easy for you to or they try to get you to justify telling what they call them white lies or uh, they i find in general they have a low opinion of the consumer that they're serving that was just from my experience with you know when i was being interviewed for positions because i was in financial sales sure um and I mean, even though I was with one organization for 32 years, um, I did have, I was headhunted on a few occasions. And I mean, and I would look mm -hmm. at stuff, but you know, I don't know. I, I, I'm really glad to be where I am now and out of that, that place because I was in a situation where I ran the business. So it was very easy to create an environment, you know, of honesty and, you know, customer service is really important and not overselling your client. It's better to go back and sign them up for the higher amount after they go back to work, after having the baby, you know, than trying to push on them, you know, the higher amount so that you get it all one and done, you know? So, you know, there were all kinds of ways that you could have done it. And I find that if you do stuff like kind of over and over and over again, then you become numb to it and you justify it. And then if there's financial yeah. rewards, like significant financial rewards, I mean, look at how many people, um, you know, like now, you know, Richard Hart, in my opinion, from seeing what he did, 
I mean, he can't come back now to crypto, right? After stealing all that money, if it comes out that he did that, right? Spending the money on private jets and right. all of that stuff. But that was what I said. That's what I saw, right? But I mean, I don't know till I get the confirmation. Um, but that's an example of somebody that, I mean, he thought he was so great and everything. I remember watching an interview with him years ago and he was like, he was funny and he was like talking about IOTA and how he would never, you know, go because they did this. And, you know, he says, it's, it's kind of like if your girlfriend ever effed your father, you know, you wouldn't like that kind of thing. You wouldn't go, but you wouldn't go with it. Right. And I was like, I was like, oh, who is this person? I know, He's always so I know. over the top. And then. You know, and he's so, so he's talking about people being dishonest and this. And then I and then I heard that I was like, oh, I am so not surprised that he did that because yeah. I mean, he just seems in his mind he would justify that kind of stuff. I've never met the person. I don't know him. I don't speak to him. Um, I'm just talking about in general dishonesty in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And it also you see it in crypt crypto. So not just the Goldman Sachs, but also in the cryptocurrencies, you have your various um, low lifes and losers who um, just can't seem to make it without uh, screwing people over. Yeah. Uh, guys, if you can, go ahead and put some questions over in the right-hand side. Either type them all in caps or put a Q in front of them. It'll help me out a lot. And then we'll get to the ones up on the Discord. But, Sam, I just want to hit some maybe crypto kind of news items real quick and kind of just get your thoughts. We kind of did this uh, last week, and I thought it was kind of helpful for people. So uh, just give me one sec. I'm going I know, to actually, that's a really good format because we can just, like I said, I'm glad you brought up about Gary because yeah. I was going to bring it up because somebody posted it in the Discord room. Um, and I clicked on that right away. And it was like, and it was like oh, just one hour ago. And I was, I was like, oh, I want to see this. <laughs> and I did create a poll over there, guys, to just kind of keep you entertained. And, uh, you know, it, it helps me to see where your minds are at and what you've, you know, what you've been looking at this week and whatever. Um, and I'll start doing that more often. But I thought this one was interesting. Ethereum staking surges to 7.4 million ETH and counting. Uh, they're doing a big thing. If you want to learn more about not only retail staking, but institutional staking, Coindesk is running this thing all week. It's basically called Staking Week. Um, where they're holding lots of different interviews and uh, just kind of different things. I just found this really interesting. Um, I think there's a German bank now offering fully insured uh, in, in uh, Ethereum staking, I believe. Um, that's this uh, interview that's going on right here. But uh, yeah, German finance heavyweights develop fully insured crypto staking offering. So, you know, and there is a report out here, Q2 uh, 2023 state of staking report. Um, but anyway, you guys might want to go ahead and take a look at that. It's kind of interesting. Uh, just any thoughts about this before I move on to the next one? I think one, that Steve? this is one of the key to getting um, some of the older people on board and also other people who may mm -hmm. not be older, but they are fearful of technology, rightfully so. Because, I mean, look at how many of us have lost money through hacks on wallets and phishing schemes. And so if you have your cryptos insured, I mean, even my the SIM swaps, my phone that I have is um, insured against uh, a sim, swim, SIM swap up to $2 million, which includes like crypto losses. Yeah. So, um, which I don't have any on my phone, but still, I mean, a person, it could get in there, the 2FA, the two-factor authentication, all of that stuff. Um, this stuff, it's really, really important and a really important part of it taking it to the next level because not everybody is ready to, you know, get in that horse and that wagon and start going west you know, where you don't even know where your next glass right. of water is coming from, you know, so that was cryptos back when, right. you know, back in 2017. I remember when we were just desperately trying to find any information that we could on blockchain and cryptos and what was coming out because I didn't work in the industry like you did, right? You would have had more contact with those right. folks. So I really really think this is part of taking it to the next level and look at how quickly it's happening and look at how quickly it's happening without the United States. That's a thing. You, you know, it's, it's kind of like trying to hold water in your hands, you know, is, is, is the more uh, tightly you try and maybe hold that water, the more it's just going to leak out. And, you know, it, Technology is just efficiency. That's all technology is. And it's going to go where it's appreciated and used. I mean, I, this was another good one. And we, you know, we've talked about this now for years, but Buenos Aires is basically rolling out government idea or IDs um, and they're, they're being delivered on the Ethereum blockchain via uh, ZK Sync. So, you know, this is 
aims next, I think they're rolling it out, uh, oh, by year end. The complete Quark ID roadmap aims to reach uh, over 2.5 million users by broadening the range of available credentials. So they're going to take people's uh, credentials. I think they're going to scan them. Uh, but anyway, this stuff is coming to the Ethereum blockchain uh, through layer two ZK Sync. So anyway, very interesting to me. And then this this specific protocol that's running on here is Quark ID. But, you know, we've talked about this many times. Um, but, you know, lots of places around the world don't have an ID management system. They don't have necessarily uh, up to date registrations for people. Um, so, you know, blockchain is a great use for that. So. Anyway, just any thoughts about that? I think that? that part of what is going to pull many of the South American countries out of this constant, it's almost like wash, rinse, repeat, wash, rinse, repeat. When they, oh, we're going to yeah. list bonds. Oh, we're going to make money. Oh, we're going to declare bankruptcy. Oh, we're going to have hyperinflation. <laughs> I mean, this is just, it's getting to the point of ridiculousness. And it's all because of the people who get in that it's, it's just corruption. And it's not, even people who honestly mm -hmm. say, who really do want to make a difference. I always think back to a relative of mine talking about how difficult it was um, to uh, not play the pot. Like you had to play the politics, you know, and this was just in small local uh, community, right? But you still, people who were getting the jobs or the positions coming open, it was all political. And if you tried to do anything that was mm -hmm. against the grain, but that it was great and made the difference, then it would get squashed, you know? So this has been an ongoing yeah. thing in South America in the financial industry where they just can't get, they just can't get their head above water because all they need to do is be able to float and get some air just for a little bit. Nope, nope. It's like, as soon as somebody gets elected, sure. then other people come in and they start getting their grubby hands on whatever money they can get their hands on and then they're back in that situation again. So this is going to put an end to it. Blockchain is trustless. It doesn't matter what the rat bastards are doing. They won't be able to get their hands on your money unless it's someone like Richard Hart and you're buying that pulse chain thing. So don't get sucked into that stuff, <laughs> yeah. right? That's it. You're going to lose your money. But, no. but like I said, that's your choice if you want to go and, and put your money into that. But it's different sure. if you're putting your money into a country and investing and trying to make things work there and they just can't get a financial system moving so i think they've given up trying to ha trying to create their own financial system and they're just going trying to they're just the going way. to go with yeah. blockchain they're gonna yeah, very, very interesting here. It says this, this is going to be a uh, phased uh, rollout, but uh, basically it intends to operate on the principle of self-sovereignty, allowing individuals complete control over their personal data. I don't know, that sounds a little fishy to me. But anyway, while documentation will uh, initially be limited, the Buenos Aires government is planning a phased introduction of various official credentials. So starting in November, citizens will be able to access proof of income, academic attendance, certificates, key documents for benefit claims uh, right within their digital wallets. So come to a theater near you, I think, Sam. Um, let's go ahead and I want to look at our questions over here on the right-hand side. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few of yeah. these. Lynn had a question. She said, this is the first uh -huh. I heard you can get insurance for a phone. You know what? I have um, now had this phone for more than a year. I didn't want to, they have like a promo code where you can refer people. I mean, you don't really get much or anything like that, but I'm definitely not referring anybody to anything unless it works really well for me. Just like my BitFi wallet, right? Yeah. I mean, put my Dogecoin in there. Mm -hmm. It was safe for years. Um, you know, my XRP is still safely tucked away in my BitFi. Never had a problem with it. Um, anyone who did, it was great. Gave him my wallet, put his number in. He got into his wallet with my, not my wallet, but the little little thing that, the, the interface that you use. So mm -hmm. that worked out. Um, you know, but I don't didn't, didn't do affiliate codes or anything like that anymore because I found that... Um, folks, you know, we're looking for some customer service from me and I just didn't have time for that. But I will put, I will look up my Afani uh, link and stuff and I will put it in the, um, in the promo, the self promo room. So anybody who wants to look at getting an Afani phone, um, know that they work well and everything seems to be working smoothly um, with my Afani phone. And like I said, um, they, they say they're insured. I can't say that I've had to make any claims yet but i'm sure that uh if it wasn't working out we would have heard from somebody by now that it wasn't working out 
but I'll ask them when I write, I will ask them yeah. when I write them as well, if they have any situations that have that you had any claims come up yet from that. So that'll be interesting to know if they say, no, we've got, you know, we've got a hundred thousand lines on now, or we've got 50,000 lines and, you know, we haven't had any successful hacks yet, but if they've had one, well, you know, have they made a claim and, you know, how much money did they get? That's what I want to know. So I'll ask, a, right. I'll ask about that right. too. And I know a lot of people that use uh, that service uh, and I've always been, I've never heard anything bad about the service. I've also never heard of anybody actually um, trying to uh, make a claim, uh, but uh, I've, I've only heard good, good. things. So um, Bart and Tom's got, well, no, I think Rhonda's here. Okay. Rhonda's got one here. Uh, did Chainlink just set off the bull run and what's the price for the end of the year and what full bag question mark i bought my first link at 52 cents in 2019. um well i think like uh it, it'll be double digits something like 53 bucks i i don't know if it'll be at the end of the year or not but you know certainly quick enough right i think chain link is gonna do really well um i don't know Moo, what what's chain look, link looking like on uh Coin Gecko, I haven't really been looking at the. I've only like noticed uh, Ethereum actually, because that's what I'm put my eye on. Because that's like I said, the banks are scaring me, so I might have to just. I may just sure. have to put a bunch of money in Ethereum and stake it until I'm ready to buy uh, another piece of property. Uh, Link's doing really well. Um, what about the 17th of August? Uh, Chainlink was about what uh, five dollars and seventy-five cents, something like that. And today it sits at seven dollars and eighty-six cents. So it's doing quite well. It's up almost three percent today. Um, you know, a lot of people are excited about Chainlink, and obviously, you know, all the good press that's been coming out around the CBOS conference and everything else, and people are kind of getting hip to how integrated they are into some of these mechanisms. Um, that are that will be rolled out to people in the future. So I, th I think that's a big reason uh, for it's also I mean, Chainlink has been kind of depressed for a long time. Uh, we've been through a really kind of horrific time in crypto throughout 2022 um, and in parts of, you know, so anyway, um, so I think it was just time. I, I think it's a, you know, at seven dollars and eighty six cents, it's it's doing quite well this year. So, yeah, um, I can show a chart. Um, but I got to reconfigure my screen. So I'm going to wait and do that. But I don't know. I'm excited about it. Uh, you know that I like changing. Yeah, I, I think it'll um, be a 10 times mover. That's why it's suspected when the next big wave comes, when we go take that big run up, that it'll be for a lot of stuff, not everything, but a lot of stuff that we hold will be 10 times. And I think for sure that chain link, I mean, that's one of the original Q labs, chain link. And uh, I love it saw it from the beginning yep. you loved it from the beginning and it's still out there yep. expanding and now becoming one of the favorites and i'm not surprised so you know if anybody's out there and if you're looking for something to buy and uh you already got enough of your matic and ethereum and solana and all that other stuff we've been talking about but you don't have any chain link you know i mean i would buy chain link before i would even buy xrp for example oh it Heck yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. I would agree with that. Uh, Barton Tom's got one here. What are the three best cryptos to buy in October, 2023, if one has $500 to buy cryptos? For $500? Oh my goodness, let me see, geez. Which one would I buy? I'm gonna let you go first, Moo. Which one would you buy? I'd probably take 500 bucks and throw it right into yeah. Ethereum. So I know, I know that's I'm boring. <laughs> that's what i was thinking right now i said oh i said i think really i really do think ethereum is going to go for another run and i mean and knowing bart and tom i mean he's an older gentleman so i mean young at heart that's for sure i would say when i meet barton he seems like a teenager to me very young at heart right sure i love that you know when you don't lose your um zest for yeah. life your interest i should say yep so i'm i think to myself many times i'm like you know, as I grow older, because I I'm older now, but as I grow older than I am now, I would like to, I would like to keep that you know, upbeat attitude. And Bart and Tom, he always has a smile on his face. I mean, I'm sure he's not happy all the yeah, time, but no, he seems to be yeah, he, when I see him, he's always smiling, and you can tell that he's taken, he's taken the right side of things. So, yeah, I I would say. Um, 
Barton's got a little bit of gambler in him though, right? So I don't think Ethereum's going to do it for him. So <laughs> I would say like, well, if I had to go to the next tier, I would go yeah. to Lincoln. Um, I, I was going to say, yeah, those were my decks too. Chain link and Polygon, right? So we're of the same mind there. So, so yes, I was, I was uh, reminiscing in my mind about Barton there. And then I was getting the information from his, his dad was like, yeah, he's too much of a gambler. Give him a. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, Barton's also got another one here wanting to know about this German bank. Um, so I, I think everybody should go out here and, and take a look um, at the Coindesk Staking Week. I think you'll learn a lot about staking and you'll get a better idea where kind of the industry is, um, not only for retail, but also for institutions and through institutions. So um, Muant, what is the name of the German bank which holds custody of Ethereum and also ensures that I'm going to slaughter the name because I, I can't speak German. Um, but here's the press release here. It's um, Sam, help me out. Bors Stuttgart Digital and Munich Re um, Group uh, expand partnership with innovative and safe staking solutions for institutional and retail investors. But this is uh, if you go out there or you just want to search for this yourself, you can see that this press release uh, came out. Uh, but I don't know, around the 12th, I think, of September. So it's been out for a couple of weeks, but it's getting a lot yeah. of attention. And the only week. thing I don't like about it is that it's in Germany and it's like, oh, do they have your private keys? And it's kind of like those gold places, you know, it's sort of like people are like, oh, but you can store your gold. I'm like, yeah, but then they'll just steal it, right? Then they'll steal it. They'll tell you, <laughs> oh, we were ripped off somehow, blah, blah, blah. Here's your cash. It was like, listen. If I wanted cash, I would have had cash. I wanted gold. I give me my gold back. Oh, we don't have it, you know. But if you if you do self custody, right? Then you and and don't do what Bill did. Don't be digging in the backyard, okay? I thought I didn't know people did that for real, you know. It wasn't until I met Bill D year a couple few years ago and he told me that about his his uh silver was yeah. in, the, in in the it was like in a box and I helped him find it. I just told him it was, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, I told him where it was. I was like, no, no, it's there. I said, you just have to. And I told him where he had to go in relation to the tree. And then he found it. But I was like thinking in the back of my head, I was like, what have I got myself into? These people actually do bury their stuff in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Anyways, yeah, yeah, this has been the best time of my life uh, the last four years. But I was thinking to myself, what am I getting <laughs> myself into? <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me a sec. Let's go take a look at some of these questions up on uh, your Discord up there. Um, all right, this is from Mike Net eight eight eight. Hi Mu was recently invited to review a new global payment solution bringing banking and crypto to everyone, uh, mainly in strength. And understand that Chainlink and XRP may already be working with major banks to do the same thing. However, I'd be curious to know if you have any insight to Ultron and Flip Me, and if Sam has any vision to whether this is the real deal. Um, I believe some Solana developers are working on this. Sorry, you may have been asked this question before, but, but it wasn't on my radar. I really enjoy the show and appreciate your commenting, uh, delivering quality content. Uh, there is a great synergy between the two of you. Have an amazing show, Mike. Well, thank you very much, Mike. I, I think Sam and I really enjoy uh, hanging out together and laughing. And uh, um, yeah, it, it is a good chemistry. Uh, Sam, I don't know anything. And Mike, I don't know anything about this Ultron or Flip Me. I know uh, a lot about cryptos and I just I've never run across either one of these. So I can't really say and I can't even I can't even let you know um, if the Solana developers are working on this. So sorry about that, Mike. You were probably hoping for a lot. Yeah, more. I yeah, I, I got that um, you should probably just buy like Chainlink or XRP instead. That's what yeah. I got because I'm like, oh, I don't think that I think that the guy. OK, the guy who's doing this. Uh, actually, there's him and there's somebody else, another man. Um, I think they're younger, like under 40 for sure. And I feel like this is not their big ticket. I feel like it's coming for them. Like if the whoever's developing that, like I'm in their space now. And they're saying, okay, well, that's not going to be it. But there's going to be, as a result of them doing this, they're going to get into something that's really big. Like, who knows? Maybe Elon's going to call them about X. Right. Uh, here's one, Sam. Sam and Moo, how deep next drop from $3 trillion will be? 
perhaps to 1.5 trillion and how long will it be question mark three to four months question mark if we start rising from november reach three trillion in january thanks for everything you do well first of all when we run to three trillion again there there's no guarantee that it's not just going to keep going right um i do see that there is going to be a major calamity that's coming up and i don't really have anything to add on this i mean we're barely over one trillion uh right now so i, I you know, I guess what I would say, like to this question is, let's worry about three trillion when we get to three trillion. Um, I don't know, is what I would say. Um, okay, Anmar's got one here. Hey, Sam and Moo, do you have any sell prices for Link, Superverse, and AVAX for three trillion total market cap run? Thank you, Anmar. Um, I would, uh, my chain link, I would uh, jump off at the last all time high, I think, which was $53. Yeah, I would probably sell some of that because just because my buy in was 225. So I mean, the greedy get you caught, I keep hearing that greedy get you caught, greedy, you know, it doesn't matter if it becomes $500 someday, you know, I bought it at 225. So you don't have to keep all of it, right? I won't sell all of it. But I would say that's my answer there is the, the last all-time high that they had, I'm probably going to just sell off half. 